Hello and welcome to another episode of Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast. I am Elvis, your host, and Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast is not safe for work. We are teachers who love our jobs, and because of that, we're going to remain anonymous and use pseudonyms. Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast is released every Wednesday and sponsored by Lud Lamb Dramatics Educational Theater Classroom Posters. If you need classroom theater posters for your theater room, or if you know a theater teacher in your building, go check out LudLambDramatics.com. That's L U D L A M D R A M A T I C S dot com. Lud Lamb Dramatics. And if you use the code T N A D 15 at checkout, you can get 15% off your order. If you have a story or something you'd like to share with Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast, you can hit us up on Facebook or Instagram at Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast or at our website, Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast dot com. Please, if you can, follow and leave a review. Five stars, of course. And if you can, and get a chance, find just one person in your building and tell them about Teacher Needs a Drink podcast. Tell them something you heard, hopefully something good, and help spread the word. It's an easy way to help us get the word out there about our tiny little podcast. Well, guys, this week, uh, week three after winter break, much better so far compared to last week. My God, last week was a shitstorm. But anyway, we got together, we had drinks, it was wonderful. This episode's a little silly and we go off task a little bit, but hey, it is what it is. Welcome to episode 17. I really don't remember. Anyway, enjoy. Welcome to Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast. I am Elvis, your host, and with me today I have the wonderful Bunny O'Hare. What's up, Elvis? Yay, and of course for me, a course for me, a cross for me. <laughs> <laughs> what? A cross for me, I have Mr. Turd Ferguson, and to my left, she is a delight. She is Miss Sparkles. Hey. <laughs> from NBCNews.com. Seattle schools won't allow unvaccinated students back from winter breaks. Seattle schools are closed winter break, but some are opening their doors to offer vaccines. Seattle Public Schools is warning thousands of students that they will be excluded from school after Christmas break unless they get in compliance with Washington State's vaccine laws. The school district posted a notice online on December 20th that stated, Student records must reflect updated immunization status by January 8th, or students cannot attend school until the required information is provided to the school nurse. An estimated 2,000 students are not in compliance with vaccine laws. Good Families God. of these students were notified via email, postal mail, and a letter sent home from school. The district is hosting three free immunization clinics over the winter break to help students get in compliance. One clinic was held last week. There's also a clinic on Monday. Monday, December 30th, and Friday, January 3rd. We got a letter saying you've got to get these vaccines, said Grant Reese Jones, the Seattle parent. We got it all done. Luckily, we could get into the doctor. Some students are out of compliance, are missing measles, mumps, and rubella vaccine, the NMR. Jesus. Washington state lawmakers voted to get rid of the personal or philosophical exemption for the MMR vaccine after two measles outbreaks sickened 87 people in schools and sent the state into a state of emergency. Yikes. However, students may still receive exemptions for medical or religious reasons. Mm. According to state law, school districts were supposed to start excluding students out of compliance 30 days after school started, but they waited. Mm. Uh, I support you, Seattle. Go ahead. Science is a thing. Full support. Full support. Yeah. I just, I, every single year that I've taught, it seems like there's been at least one child. I've taught in pretty big schools, and it seems like there's been at least one child who has been undergoing chemo for something or other. Mm-hmm. Or Same is here. otherwise immune compromised through nothing that they can do anything about. They can't get the vaccine themselves. And so it's putting the most vulnerable students at risk well not even just the students like you have to think about like if you as a teacher carry that disease home to your children who may not be able to be vaccinated because they're too young or they're immunocompromised measles can make you sterile yeah Yeah. 
I think I think and we, we just had that measles nut outbreak, but that whole situation where somebody went through several airports and mm-hmm. I mean, yeah, spreading their yeah, nasty exactly so communicable but, diseases everywhere, yeah. and also not to not to make it selfish, but there's also the adults in the building. There yes. are adults who have heart conditions, and there are teachers who are pregnant. If you are a teacher and your school offers any sort of on-campus vaccine update, you should do that. Do it. Yep. I did it last year. I did my Tdap, my MMR, um, and I got a flu shot all yeah, last flu year. Shot. Yes. Flu shot all the time. Who wants to use your sick days when you're actually sick? Right. You reserve them for mental health or an extra day of vacation. My God. Yeah. Or, that you was... know, when your kids are sick. Don't right. use it for when you're sick. Yeah. Don't get sick. I had, get the the flu. I had the flu back before Thanksgiving. I did get a flu shot, but I guess it was the whatever strain was not covered by the flu shot and yeah. that stuff. Um, but... I, it was so frustrating to be sitting at home running a fever and not being able to do shit, not feel good enough to do shit, and just be sitting there. All I felt good enough to do was sleep and Netflix binge, which I'm not complaining about, but mm-hmm. I, w- I didn't want to burn a day on a day that I felt too crappy to yeah. do anything. Sick days right. are not meant for when you're sick. They no. need to be used for good things. Seriously, teachers, please take care of yourself. Update your vaccines. It's good for you, for your kids, and for your students. Especially yep. those little snot goblins are going to come and grab the apple <laughs> off your desk and drink your Starbucks or don't sneeze let in your them. face. Don't let them take, take your stapler pretzels. off your desk. This is from the Reddit. One of my girls had the weight of the world on her shoulders. She has four siblings and her single parent household is trying to struggle by on disability. She did not know what they were going to do with Christmas on the way. I had no clue. She did not want to burden anyone with this. Just so happens that our charity project had only one recipient. I had announced in class for people to anonymously submit names to me if they knew anyone who needed help. She did not send me a message. Her elbow partner did. Said partner then did some reconnaissance at an after-school study session to discover sizes and likes. So yesterday, my kids went shopping. Today, they wrapped. Then they all hid in the lab as I brought her in and gave her five huge bags of clothes, dolls, and necessities. She cried. Those were relief tears, joy tears. So you never know what someone else is going through, the weight they carry in their soul. But God moves in mysterious ways. The stars align and things work out. And she also notes that this was a completely anonymous thing. So like her kids were broken up into Disney princess codename groups for their shopping. (laughs) Um, and then they had the student, when she received the gift, she was by herself. So the other kids didn't know who received the gifts. And then she was allowed to leave a few minutes early with her stuff. So nobody would see her with everything. So nobody knew um, yeah. what, except for the teacher and I think a couple of administrators yeah. knew which student actually received everything. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. I love the part that about her shoulder partner being the one to nominate her. Mm-hmm. Just, the, the kids, as much as they make us crazy, they really do sweet things. Yeah. I've noticed that a lot about this generation is like even when they're being buttheads, there is a real sweetness to a lot of them in mm-hmm. the undercurrent. Yeah. And it, sometimes it, when you're in the middle of a frustrating moment, it can be hard to remember that that sweetness is in there. Mm-hmm. But it's in there. <laughs> yep. It can be hard, but it's in there. You know, they care about us and about each other. They have human moments every once in a while. My student teaching mentor referred to it as hormone poisoning. Yeah. The fog. The ways that we can help our students and change their life have nothing to do with what their score is on whatever bullshit standardized test they came up with this year. Would you rather live in a world with people who got excellent standardized test scores but have no clue how to interact with other humans or with people who, you know, sort of average on their test scores, but have a heart and have empathy and have compassion for other people. Cause I know what my answer is. But they still I, have like a big Instagram following or <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, these are the questions that keep us awake at night I as know. educators. If yeah. I look, if I'm, if people don't know who I am on the gram, then what's the point? Just the tip. Dun, 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 dun. Just the tip. Just the tip. <laughs> We're very mature on this podcast, everyone. The episode that was never released. I'm very guilty of this myself, but just a tip. Don't work at home. If that means coming in a little early to get things done, but don't be the person who is always thinking, I like my job and this is my whole life. No, have a life. 
have a job, keep the life, and keep the job at your job. I think that's a great tip, but it's hard to do. It is so, yes. it is so hard. I agree. Mm-hmm. Especially it's, when you're working like, you know, 50, 60 hours a week and then yeah. coming home. and I've had many, many weeks where I went to school and did not see sunlight. Like, I yep. went in when it was dark <laughs> and, and yep. I left when, when it was dark, dark. with yep. the whole point being just to get it all done so when I left, I could be done. And then I was like, oh, what is left for me? And that's mm-hmm. hard. That's very, very tricky. My first crop of students, as in my first years, had... <laughs> They were convinced that I was a vampire because <laughs> I only came in before school and I only left after the sun went down. And I mean, granted, that was before I had children at all. I, like Miss Bunny O'Hare, uh, do theater as an extracurricular. And it is very hard to not work from home when you're doing that particular extracurricular activity yep. because oh, yeah. you've got to read scripts, you've got to do research, you've got to paint some stuff you somebody gotta prepare for your next rehearsal you gotta prepare for rehearsal thrift now, town what's up yeah uh-huh. you gotta go to value village or <laughs> whatever the, now the nice thing is there are some things that you can do for work that you can do in your pajamas while america's next top model is on mm. yes and I, i'm okay with doing those things from home but i try to keep my grading my lesson planning and all of that during my conference period the drudgery Try try as much as you can to keep that separate because yeah. it just makes it easier to give your best self when you get home to whoever you have waiting for you. And I think people forget that, that we teachers have lives outside of the classroom. I know this is shocking information. Oh, my God. You know, we have other stuff going on. We have loved ones. We have pets. Mr. O'Hare and my cat deserve the best version of me. True story. When I started dating my wife, she found out that, you know, on her second date that I was the teacher. And she was like, that's weird. I was like, what do you mean it's weird? Well, like, you're outside of a school. I thought you all just, like, <laughs> had a there. secret cabinet that you <laughs> went into and slept in. <laughs> like, it's always what? so weird seeing the kids out and about. Like, have you ever run into a kid at the grocery store? I have. Miss, and I saw you hilarious. at Kroger. Okay. Well, Teachers buy groceries, too. Yeah. I have to eat. This one kid came up to me while we were in the cereal aisle. And he's like, Mr. Ferguson. It's like, what? What cereal are you getting? <laughs> well, I'm getting Fruit Loops for my son, but you know. And he was just like, oh, really? Because I really like Count Chocula. And apparently, you know, that was a moment. And he like told everybody on Monday, I was just like, hey, did you know that Mr. Ferguson's kids like Fruit Loops? It's like, okay, kid. Mine was always like, with the accusatory tone, I saw you at Kroger. Okay, I was buying toilet paper and orange juice. Like, that's How not scandalous. <laughs> I've learned that unless I attract attention, they won't recognize me, mostly out of context, because they're not looking for right. Elvis when yeah. I'm outside of school. And so I could walk right by, and they take like they have to stare like, I know you from somewhere. How do I know you? Yeah. I did this. Oh, this there's a nice woman at my daughter's school who I pass by every day, and she works for the school. And I think she's a crossing guard. Like one of that's her after school duties to make sure when I yeah. cross the parking lot. And so I usually smile and say hi. And then I was at the gym and I'm all in buff mode. And I see this woman, she smiles at me and I kind of mm-hmm. smile at her. I'm like, she looks, how do I know you? I work at your daughter's school. Oh, yes. 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 When you Carry see on, people sorry. outside of the Moving context. Yeah. Yes. yeah. Enjoy your yoga class. Mm-hmm. I have to ask. Yeah. Has anybody ever gone to the grocery store and, and had alcohol in their grocery cart and they're walking out and their principal walks in at the same time? Yeah, I don't care. <laughs> okay, no. well, I'm also the girl who used to go out and like party with parents because we were <laughs> friends before their kids were in my class. Uh, yeah. So yeah. like once their kids were in my class, I was like, we don't stop being friends just because yeah. your kids in my class. Yeah. Now it's just hilarious because I can text you when they're bad. Uh-huh. <laughs> I've only had one principal who was a real, she was a religious, didn't really understood why people would drink because that's going to send you to hell. And she had a hard time oh. pulling that back. She was very, very judgmental. But I still, there's no rules. I mean, I wasn't drinking and driving. I wasn't no. doing anything. Yeah. Like, we're at a bar that is adults only. Right. You, you can't throw shade at me. I'm no. sorry. You can call my mom. My, <laughs> my, mom. Yeah. my administrators have almost universally been 
fine with it. Like they're just kind of like as long as you are not wearing a school shirt. Yep. Yep. Like as long as you're not wearing something that's going to identify you as yep. an employee of this school or this district. Yep. And as long as you don't end up in jail, mm-hmm. then you, what you do on your free time is your free time. That was my my previous district. Our HR director, like for new teacher orientation, had like a whole spiel about um, if you're gonna go have a drink after work, you know, you're gonna go have a margarita. Totally cool. Please change shirts. Mm-hmm out of your school shirt before you walk in or wherever it is you're going so that I don't get a phone call. Yeah. That was her big thing. Was she just didn't want people calling her. I saw mm. a whole bunch of your teachers at Applebee's getting drunk. Now, my principal, his, his other guideline currently is not in a school shirt, and he would prefer that we go somewhere outside of our zoning area. area. Yeah. yeah. Just to reduce the chance of us running into somebody, but, but we kind of you know. want that too. None of us. Oh yeah, like I spend right, yeah. day with you fuckers. I, yeah. I don't, I don't oh yeah, no. We purposely again. choose places. Like when when my fellow teachers and I go out, um, if it's like right after school, we will purposely choose somewhere like maybe 15 minutes away from campus mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, at least, because then generally the kids won't be there. My wife, um, when we first moved in together and everything else, um, I refused to go to one specific grocery store location, and she was just like, <laughs> "Why?" Because I do not want to see any of my children. Nope. I used to I used to go to the mall on the other side of town. I would pass one mall and drive to the other mall, especially if I needed to do things like you know go into. Victoria's Secret or, you know, right. something like that. I'm like, I, know you buy underwear? I really don't need my students seeing what kind of bras I'm picking out. What are your go-to wardrobe pieces that you can't teach without, like you could not make it through a school year without having? I own, they're these great pants. They are, I can't even they're not. They are not I, made out of vinyl. They are not made out of vinyl, nor do they have bow ties on them. <laughs> um, I love the old navy pixie pants, and I get the full length pant because I don't really like ankle pants, but they sell them in an ankle pant and a full length pant, mm-hmm. and they come in many colors. And those are my, that's what I wear every day. I think I own like 15 pairs of those pants in different colors and patterns. I I tend to rely more on dresses than I used to when I started teaching because it's only one piece that I have to worry about. That is true. I don't have to worry about having a top and pants that match each other or the the cuts are, you know, look decent together or whatever. Just throw on a dress. You're good to go. I really love um, Vionix shoes, which you can buy at Dillard's. Oh, okay. Um, and yeah, they're made for people who, who have experienced plantar fasciitis, which I have, and I own two pairs of their sandals and they are kind of expensive. They're like a hundred dollars a piece, but I've had those sandals for four years now. They also sell inserts. Um, so if you don't want to buy the whole expensive shoe, you can buy the insert. You're Mm. such an old lady. I am an old lady. And, and I'm not about ashamed. Being younger than us, but <laughs> I'm younger. If you use this orthopedic and this vitamin <laughs> batch, I you will have a spring in your step all day. Hey, that's the ten. <laughs> <laughs> Out of uh, this is my 17 year, yeah, 17th year of teaching, and uh, I finally got the best insult that I've heard in quite some time. I'm excited. Uh huh. So. Um, the kid has uh, anger issues anyway, but he, you know, got very upset with something that I told him to do in class, and he said, "Why you got to be a motherfucking ass-looking shit stain?" <laughs> what? That was really a good. Motherfucking ass-looking shit stain. <laughs> I you wouldn't know? describe I mean, I'll you as you, that. I'll give you yeah. points for creativity, but <laughs> well, you wow. see, that's what I thought as well, and then the sad thought entered my mind that this kid's not that creative. So I'm thinking to myself, yeah, he probably heard it at home, which made me sad. Don't get sad. He probably saw it on YouTube or heard a stand-up comic. I I mean, mean, it was probably something that that. brought joy to his life. It's possible. (laughs) I'm rolling that way. Okay, roll that way. But, you know, it was that whole thing of, wow, I don't think I've ever been called a motherfucking ass like in shit (laughs) (laughs) stains. There are a lot of syllables in that. Because, I mean, I've been called like a dick. I think I've been called like some a guy called or a kid called me ass munch one time oh. <laughs> and i was like ass All munch right. really i kind of giggled and i was like okay i'll write that on the form yep i so. can see like so your son called me an ass munch she's like oh god yeah, yeah. The, his brother calls him that all the time well yeah. well there you go have you guys ass ever munch. gotten the the suggestion from like 
administrators. So I was like, hey, this kid cursed in my class. And that's what I wrote on the referral. And they were like, no, no, no. You have to write what they said because yes. then we get to tell their mom and you dad. Know, yes. here's the we're supposed to write it out. We're not supposed to do like F asterisk asterisk. Don't no, you're exactly. supposed to write the actual You're supposed to write word. F-U-C-K if they tell you to fuck off. Like, so, yeah, I had to write that up. Um, but what's even funnier is I got an uh, email from another parent in the class, and she was actually a little bit upset that we didn't send out a notice to them saying, look, this was said in class. We're sorry, et cetera, et cetera. I'm just no. Like, yeah. Uh, no, no, no. no. And, and I was just like, really? What? Do you want me to send you an email that says, hey, today in class, I'm sorry if your student heard a motherfucking ass looking shit thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> Do you the- want me to put that in the email to you? Really? Well, and also... Also, is it really any of your business as a parent? Like, your kid came home and told you, hurrah. Imagine how that would degrade. Like, yes, today the student said that Miss Winston was thicker than a bowl of oatmeal. <laughs> and it's like, oh, I'm glad we said that to everybody. <laughs> All parents, uh, your kid might have been offended, but she oh. is. I've got the students, like, trying to talk me into cussing when they can tell that I'm censoring myself kind of like well that's you know that's just that just that sucks or that you know that's 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 donkey's crap. butt they're like miss you can say it i'm like i'm not gonna say it <laughs> i've come up with my own um like placeholders for mm-hmm. when i want to curse i love placeholders yes. what are yours um one of mine is god bless america uh, it's funny nah. you gotta up your game i'm not yeah. doing it no no you haven't no. you gotta be like you gotta start simple, like cheese and crackers, and then you gotta get like even more, like pish posh, and just something really like the more syllables you can add in, the better. Like, Malarkey, Farfignugan, <laughs> Frankenstein toenails, and just bizarre. And they're like, "Wait, did he just say toenails?" Like, yeah. <laughs> just the tip. Just the tip. Have a digital wheel that you spin the morning after you assign homework. The wheel has options for no grade, participation grade, and or accuracy grade. The wheel decides if that assignment gets graded, not the teacher. I support that. I think it takes some of the stress off the kids. Okay, everyone did their homework. Let's see what it's valued for this time. Yeah, I mean, that way, I think that kind of encourages them to do their homework because they don't know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What if this time it was an accuracy grade and you didn't do it? Well, guess what? You got a zero. Sorry about Mm -hmm. you. All right, my friends. Well, thank you for joining us for another edition of Teacher Needs a Drink podcast. (laughs) Miss Bunny O'Hare, thank you for joining us today. A pleasure as always. Mr. Turd Ferguson, you brought so much to the table. And Miss Sparkles, cheers, everybody. Cheers. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast. Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast is released every Wednesday. If you get a chance, please tell one person in your building and help spread the word one person at a time about Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast. I'd like to thank my guests, Rosie Rose, Bunny O'Hare, and Miss Sparkles, and of course, the beautiful, wonderful, masterful Priscilla, who is by my side throughout all of this. If you would like to share a story or talk to us or leave a comment, go on to our Facebook or Instagram for Teacher Needs a Drink Podcast. And our website, you can reach us to the contact page at teacherneedsadrinkpodcast.com. Special thanks to Lud Lamb Dramatics for following us. If you need educational theater posters, go to ludlambdramatics.com. That's L-U-D-L-A-M-D-R-A-M-A-T-I-C-S.com. If you want to, please leave a five-star review, follow us, and help spread the word. Goodbye, my friends. Thank you. My vinyl thong. (laughs) Dear (laughs) listeners. Dear listeners. What the fuck? (laughs) It's got a little bow tie on the front. Oh, no, sir. (laughs) No, sir. Boots and cats. Boots and cats. Boots and cats. Boots and cats. Lights and get some glow sticks out. Just rave. (laughs) 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 Just the tears. (laughs) Ha, 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 ha.